Well, hey, handy people, Dan here. Hey, um, y'all you know, been crazy. Been working on uh, that, that new cross country I got for my daughter. That's taken a bit more work than we planned. Uh, but then, you know, my daily is this beautiful saffron here. And, uh, well, as always, there's always something else you got to do. So there's a couple things I'm going to share with you. So what, what I've done in the past uh, couple of days. So come on. So first things first, uh, I'm going to remove this door panel because this mirror that you can see is uh, that I took the glass out of. It was not; it's not functioning. The other one is, however, the the passenger side. So I don't know as when I put this mirror in, I plugged it in. I may have forgotten. You know, I am human. So we're going to see if that's the problem. If not, I'm going to replace that mirror. I actually have another saffron mirror. So. Uh, but to start things, I got to take the door panel off in order to assess where we're at. So the first step was, uh, you know, I just took this piece and popped it off. It just didn't even use tools, just pulled it by hand. Then the next piece is right here, there's a little cover. You just lift up on the very bottom, there's a little, little slot. And uh, you pull up on that cover. And that reveals a T25 Torx, which you remove with, you know, I, I really like this uh, this little this little device. Um, that's very handy. Actually, I was throwing those in there, but that's not a good spot for them because I'm about to pull the door pin. So next. You can either reach down or get a pry. I have one somewhere. I have it. Yes, I do. Where the heck is it? Well, here's a couple of them. Uh, I'm going to use this plastic one first if I can because it's less apt to damage anything. And what we're trying to do, there's a series of uh, plastic anchors that we need to get free. And all I'm doing is Popping this in there and get my hands on it. Oh. The next thing you have to do is take these guys out and this trim piece has to come off. And what you do is you reach in and push down, or from the bottom, you reach in and push up on the two legs that are there. There. Think I've got it. There we go. You'll notice this has little grippers and this little front gripper. And once you get that clear, you should be able to uh, get the rest of the door panel. Now I fully anticipate that I broke some of those connectors. All right, let's see what we've got. Well, this guy's plugged in. 
So, do I have a bad mirror? Maybe. So what I'm going to do is to troubleshoot that. And I'm sorry, I'm not pulling it all off, but there's a series of cables that are plugged in. And if you're removing a door panel, you can, uh, you can see what those cables are. Um, and the good news is, is I didn't break anything, which is kind of rare. Maybe I'm getting good at this. I've only taken these door panels off, oh, a couple hundred times. So, you know, you gotta love Volvo for the integrity of the. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna go get the other mirror, which I have right over here. We're gonna plug it in and try toggling it with that. Uh, that device that with that switch and see if uh, that'll work. Can you say spare saffron mirror? I know you can. This is a one-way switch, so the switch is bad. I get some movement out of the mirror, but not much. Okay, so I'm going to unplug that. like to examine this is the switch for the mirror and it could be just the switch went bad so I think I have another I'll go see if I do I'm pretty sure I do well I have a spare uh, switch but it's really gooey so before I put it on I like to take a little isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel and uh, I call this removing the DNA because that's what's on here is people's hand oils and interacting with the soft rubber coating that they put on these the soft touch coating or whatever they call it um, but you see a little alcohol takes that stuff right off and it I don't know, I just like it clean. Maybe I'm a little anal. Some folks think I'm a little overboard when it comes to cleaning my car, but you know what? I like it clean. Can I say? I can't, I can't 
It's anything but I like it clean. <laughs> and it doesn't take very long and you can make it, you know, much better. Maybe not perfect, but much better. And I noticed I had two of these in my little stash. So it pays when you disassemble a car. Because there's lots of parts now. The hassle is you got lots of parts and you got to be able to find them all. Which is not always easy. To wit, uh, there's another repair that I did on this car last night that I'll show you. Um, yeah. I, I looked for the part for almost two hours for a little stepper motor that controls the HVAC. Um, so we'll get into that repair here in just a minute. There. That's better. Perfect, no, but better. Yeah. That'll do the J-O-B. Man, it just amazes me how stuff sticks. But alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol is a nice product because you can use it and it's going to disinfect and it's going to clean. Plus, like I say, it takes the hand oils off these little switches and stuff. And if you're careful, and you do it gentle enough, you'll keep the coating on for the most part. Now I'm just trying to get around the back side, those little crevices. That should do the trick. Hopefully this switch works. I suppose I could have checked that first. But hey, I thought I'd live dangerously. The switch simply just uh, pops in with these two clips. So we'll pop the switch in like I'm going to use it. I guess I gotta plug the uh, mirror back in. So Replacement switch is in. That mirror is plugged in. Oh, yeah. Full functionality. Let's make sure the other one's working. Oh, yeah. You can't see it, but I can. Oh, yeah. Back in business. So, to reverse and put this back in. First thing you got to do is get that push button, the lock button, in the hole. And then there's a top track that this fits into, just inside the window. Get that in. Then you're going to, uh, oh, I got to. It pays to have something to lay on the ground and look because 
it's a lot easier. Something doesn't feel right with that. So, yeah, off it comes again. This popped off. So, to fix that, pop it back on. perfect and I'm sure not I must have knocked it loose have trouble getting these back on in the right spot. If anybody knows a trick to it, man, I'd love to hear it. Because I end up just doing this, kind of fussing with it. Try to put this back up on there. Again, be real gentle. We're getting everything lined up the way it's supposed to be. Again, getting those lined up. Yeah, my bottom here got. I broke the glue connection. But not bad enough that I'm ready to replace it. Okay. That's better. So that takes care of that.
next up is uh, this guy. And all he does is push in place. That. So we got our switch in, we got to put our little screw in. Now when you're putting this little plastic thing back in, the bottom has this little, little tab. I don't know if you can see it. But the tab goes down into that slot. And it just pushes in. It's pretty simple. Okay, now we got a fully functional door. I'm tickled. Now I'm going to put my mirror back in. And uh, by the way, I have a wide angle mirror from Europe that's going to go in. top one in my hand is the wide angle. It's, it's got a curve to it. Uh, the bottom one is an, is an American one. But uh, yeah, I don't need this one right now. And then to pop this guy in, you gotta line up, there's a couple of pins on the back. You got, a, you got a couple pins, four of them, that line up to the four holes on this thing, so. It's a little tricky, but once you get them lined up, it just snaps in. Now, let's give it a try. Okay, the next thing we tackled was, uh, if you look back up in here, this black thing, this little black square, that's a stepper motor. And that has to do with opening and closing a damper that allows heat to come from the heater core, which is up in here. And that little motor has a flapper that's behind this that allows heat up and in. Uh, that motor was broken and I replaced it. Um, but <laughs> my wife and I took a drive last weekend uh, down to Detroit area and to see our daughter. And we had to keep this closed and the other one side closed, but it was a hot day, it was 80 degrees. And the sun was beating in and she was absolutely miserable because there was no cooling on her side of the car only heat so i troubleshot it i used uh volve fcr which is the the uh, for the 98s pre-98 cars the 98 and earlier um i had to uh check out did this uh was this working was it responding and it was uh, when I turned the dials, it showed an FCR that it recognized it. So that told me that was working. The part that didn't work, I found out, was that little motor, and I had one. Oh, thank you, Robert. <laughs> and thank you, Robert, also for an incredible video on how this system operates. So that's the second thing we just tackled. And then also, um, I had to use the Magic Dust and repair these guys because as I worked in here well this one I didn't break but I broke this one was crumbling this one was crumbling and that one was all crumbling so I repaired those those are the mounts for the glove box um, and I also repaired up in here up in this corner was was cracked the plastic and I uh, was able to use some of the magic dust and uh, I don't know if you can see it but right there where my fingers rubbing there's like a it's a darker spot. That's where I used the the uh, Q-Bond reinforcing powder and uh, super glue. 
amazing stuff. Anyways, now it's time to put this guy back together, but I wanted to show you, and I'll tell you, that little motor has three screws, and two are real hard to get at, and the third one's pretty much impossible. So the trick to that is you take the old, old unit off, and I'll show you that here now. Here's the old motor. It has a W717. That was the one that was on there. Now, there were, there were originally... Um, this one, this one, and there was another one over here, three screws. Well, the two that we could access, when this is in, this little square drive drives the step, this little stepper motor drives um, the unit, but the unit sits like this, up against that, up against that, uh, that duct. You can get this one easy. You can feel this with your finger, this little rounded groove. And this one you can get to, you know, almost, you know, easy, sort of. Um, you use a Torx 15, and I used a socket, a uh, quarter-inch drive uh, system uh, to get that those out. But I could not in any way, shape, or form imagine how a, a human could get that one off. So in talking with Robert... Um, I, and watching his video, I discovered you, you get those top two out, then you just pry the unit and you break that one off. And once it's broken off, it's no big deal because it's, this doesn't take a lot of force, which is neat. Um, but it's those two screws and again, the Torx 15. And I took this apart. Um, I took this guy apart. And it's a it's a stepping motor deal, and the stepping motor works. Um, however, see these brushes underneath, and they correspond with this track of some way or some other. Um, I don't really understand the system, but I do know this. I know that this guy goes in here, and then mates up with that gear there, and then that drives at that, that motor, and then. Those little brushes tell it where the limits are, I guess. I'm not really sure. If anybody knows about how that operates or functions, it'd be great to hear from you. But uh, anyways, the motor's good in this, but something isn't because I couldn't get it. It was not corresponding or, or responding to the controller, which is the, the ECC, the climate controller box, which is where the heat and cooling knobs are. Anyways, so this guy, um, I took it apart. It only took three screws, and it's pretty brittle. I broke off several of these uh, these little mounting tabs that it clips into. I think I broke three of the four off, but no matter. This is this is just a a spare part or a junk part or whatever you want to call it part, and uh, for now. But uh, hopefully that helps, and you know, watch Robert's video on it. It's it's well worth the time because you'll learn a whole lot. He does it on an 850 in the junkyard, and uh, man, that's a great video.